JBN to keep you informed. And Michelle Jones, before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Probe launch following fatal shooting of young JDF member in Denham Town. Investigators are yet to determine the circumstances surrounding the fatal shooting of a member of the Jamaica Defense Force, JDF, in the volatile West Kingston community of Denham Town on Friday. But even as the probe continues, residents are fuming of the death of a man they described as a good soldier. He has been identified as 20-year-old Private E.J. Domville, who had been in the JDF for less than 12 months. Though pieces of the puzzle are missing, what is certain is that around 1.25 a.m., Donville was part of a team that was on foot patrol in Denham Town when he was killed. The incident took place in the vicinity of Charles Street and Chestnut Lane. The police said on Friday that a team of soldiers went in pursuit of men who opened gunfire at them, causing them to take evasive action and return fire. When the shooting ended, Dumville was sound with what appeared to be a gunshot wound to the face. He was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead. Lieutenant Colonel Carl Clark, acting brigade commander of the Jamaica Regiment and who is responsible for all deployments of soldiers across Jamaica in support of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, expressed regret of the fatal shooting. The soldiers were responding to a direct threat at their lives and in doing so, unfortunately, um, one of the soldiers was impacted possibly by one of the rounds of the threat forces. He was rushed to the Kingston Public Hospital where he was pronounced dead. The investigations continue and we continue in pursuit of these persons, perpetrators, so to speak, and we will definitely continue to be professional in what we do under the auspices of internal security operations where justification acting within the law and proportionality is first and foremost. He said he was unable to speak to claims that the soldiers were responding to reports of a shooting at a dance. Despite not being certain which gun the bullet came from that killed the soldier, JDF Communication Officer Major Kason Gonzel said the military will continue in its efforts to locate the cowards who took the life of their fellow brother. We are not deterred. We remain committed to the mission in support of the JCF and we will continue in our efforts to locate cowards who took the life of our fellow brother. In the meantime, several residents were seen mourning the death of the young soldier. They described him as a ladies' man and a motivator. According to one young man from Denham Town, the slain soldier would always encourage young people to do good and engage in positive activities. Them man they tell if I lift up your head and go back to school and them thing there. The other day a youth tell him stepfather was about for war and stab up each other. And him and him team come broke up the fight. Everybody have good things to say about him. He was a good, good man. Them man there was a the girls them type of man. The girls didn't love him. Him never this nobody around here yet. Nobody don't know what really happened. What we hear is that them go down the road and buck up in a man and him get shot, said the young man who declined to give his name. St. Andrew teen crushed in shipping container incident. A teen was crushed to death inside a shipping container that he was unloading in his community of Grandspan in St. Andrew on Friday night. The deceased has been identified as Gary Jones, 18. The incident happened about 8.30 p.m. The container was reportedly laid with boxes of laminated glass. One of the boxes reportedly fell on Jones. The Grandspan police are investigating. AK-47 rifle seized during Clarendon raid. A team of officers assigned to the Clarendon Police and Division seized one AK-47 rifle during an operation in Portland Cottage in the parish on Friday, August 23. Reports are that, at about 12.05 p.m., lawmen in the area when the premises were searched. During the search, the gun was found in the yard. No one was arrested in relation to the seizure. Investigation continues. Man charge. A complaint has been sought following gun seizure in Kingston. A man has been charged with several offences under the Firearms Act after he and his accomplice allegedly fired at a police team in an attempt to evade them on Eureka Road in Kingston on Wednesday, August 14. Charges 21-year-old Devon Fraser, otherwise called DV, of 4th Avenue, Kingston 3. He is charged with assault of common law, possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and malicious destruction of property. Reports from a halfway tree police saw that, at about 11.45 p.m., a police team was in the area when they saw Fraser and another man aboard a motorcycle. When Fraser and his accomplice saw the lawmen, it is alleged that the duo fired shots at the police to try and evade them. 
The gunfire was returned and the motorcycle crashed, pinning Fraser underneath the vehicle, police said. His accomplice escaped. Fraser was caught and searched, and following a further check of the area, a .38 special revolver containing 6.3 cartridges was reportedly found nearby. Fraser was subsequently taken into custody. He was charged with the offences on Friday. A court date for Fraser has not yet been finalised. His accomplice is currently being sought by the police. Another alleged Bentley gang member charged. Another alleged member of the Bentley gang has been charged. Members of the security forces have been searching for members of the gang who were accused of wreaking havoc in Rosetown in the Kingston Western Police Division. Ron Tomlinson, a 19-year-old, otherwise called Popsy, was charged under the Anti-Gang Act. He was charged Thursday with being a member of a criminal organization and participating in a criminal organization. Investigators accused the teen of being involved in murders and shootings in the community over the last three years. He has also been charged for the May 17 murder of 37-year-old Marlon Johnson. Investigators allege that Johnson was fatally shot along Lamont Lane by the 19-year-old accused and two other men. The teenager is also facing charges of possession of a prohibited weapon, unauthorized possession of ammunition, and using a firearm to commit a felony. A curfew was imposed in the Rosetown community earlier this week following a series of reprisal attacks and killings over the last two weeks. Several suspects have been detained and are facing charges. Commish provides insight into the assault on gangs. Police Commissioner Dr. Kevin Blake says while significant gains have been made in the island-wide pushback against organized crime, there is more to be done as the nation's law enforcement apparatus continues its coordinated thrust. In recent weeks, our security forces have been relentless in our pursuit of the criminal elements responsible for the incidents of violence in a few of our communities. Through a coordinated effort between the police and the military, we have made significant strides in dismantling the operations of these gangs. Last month, we arrested and charged a number of gang leaders across several divisions, including St. James, Westmoreland, Hanover, and Trelawney where we successfully took in custody a number of persons who had been terrorizing their communities. These arrests have dealt a major blow to the leadership and infrastructure of criminal organizations. By removing these individuals from the streets, we have disrupted their ability to orchestrate and carry out acts of violence. Additionally, our teams have seized a substantial cache of firearms and ammunition, denying the gangs the tools they use to spread fear and destruction. Our efforts have not been limited to just higher level targets. We have also conducted targeted operations across all affected divisions, apprehending other key members of these criminal networks. The successes are a testament to the commitment and the professionalism of our security forces. We will not rest until we have dismantled these criminal enterprises and restore a sense of safety and security to the communities that they terrorize. The Jamaica Constabulary Force continues to demonstrate its commitment to bringing justice to the communities affected by violent crime. On the morning of August 21st, 2024, significant progress was made in the ongoing investigation following the tragic shooting on the Cherry Tree Lane in Clarendon. The investigation, led by the highly skilled team at the Era 3 Major Investigation Task Force, culminated in the apprehension and charging of two individuals who are believed to be the central figures in the incident. The swift action taken by the police following the Territory Lane incident underscores the JCF's dedication to protecting the public and ensuring that those responsible for violence are held accountable. Leighton White, otherwise known as Banz, a 33-year-old man from Havana Heights, and Dushane Smalling, also known as Snowman, a 28-year-old from North Street, Maple and Clarendon, have been charged with eight counts of wounding with intent and one count of shooting with intent and multiple breaches of the Firearms Act. These charges brought against the suspects reflect the thorough and meticulous work conducted by the investigating team. Both accused individuals are scheduled to appear before the parish court where they will face the full weight of the law for their alleged involvement in these heinous crimes. 
This development represents a significant stride in the JCF's effort to restore peace and security to the affected communities in Clarendon and to send a clear message that criminal activities will not go unpunished. The successful apprehension and charging of these suspects not only brings a sense of closure to the families affected by the tragedy, but also reinforces JCF's resolve to combat crime and maintain law and order across Jamaica. In a significant victory against illicit drug trade, the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Firearms and Narcotics Investigation Division, EFNID, executed a major operation earlier this month, leading to the largest cocaine seizure in Jamaica's history. The raid resulted in the arrest of five male suspects, all Jamaican nationals, and the confiscation of over 5,500 pounds of cocaine with an estimated street value of over 75.8 million US dollars. The suspects charged with possession, dealing, and trafficking of cocaine remain in custody as the investigation continues. This historic seizure highlights the JCF's relentless efforts to combat the illegal firearms and drug trade, which poses a significant threat to national security. The JCF and its partners remain steadfast in our commitment to restoring peace and order in the affected communities. We understand the deep concerns and anxiety that the public has been experiencing, and we want to assure you that your safety and well-being are our top priorities. In our pursuit of dismantling these criminal networks, it is important to remember that our communities should not be held hostage by fear. The Jamaican spirit is one of resilience, vibrancy, and community. It is unacceptable that law-abiding citizens feel compelled to withdraw from these social activities that define our culture and bring us together. Our communities deserve to be safe spaces where people can live freely enjoy their lives and embrace their heritage without fear. We cannot allow a small group of criminals to dictate how we live our lives. It is not the citizens who should be locking themselves away. It is the criminals who should be denied their freedom of movement and the privileges they have abused. We are committed to restoring the peace and security that every Jamaican deserves. Together we will win this battle, not just through force but by winning the hearts and minds of the people. The safety and well-being of our communities are our top priorities, and we will stop at nothing to reclaim our streets and restore our way of life. Despite the progress we have made in arresting key gang leaders and disrupting their operations, we know that the work is not over. These criminal networks have deep roots and a willingness to adapt and evolve in the face of adversity. But we are equally determined and resolute in our efforts to dismantle them, no matter how long it takes. Our teams are working around the clock, gathering intelligence, conducting targeted raids, and pursuing every available lead. We will not relent in our pursuit of the remaining targets identified in our workbook. These individuals will be pursued and brought to justice as we continue to chip away at the foundation of these gangs. Our partnership with the military has been instrumental in amplifying our capabilities and resources. Together, we are employing a multi-pronged approach that combines intelligence-driven operations, community engagement, and a relentless pursuit of those responsible for violence. Rest assured, the security forces will not rest until we have restored a sense of normalcy and security in our communities. We are in this for the long haul and we will not back down in the face of adversity. Your safety and well-being are our driving force, and we will stop at nothing to achieve our goal of a safer, more peaceful Jamaica. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment, and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.